Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week analysis for gold for the trading week ending Friday 3rd of December 2021. I'm changing the wave counts a little, both of them bull and bear now to see sideways movement. I'll have an alternate for the bullish would expect, which expects price to just continue on higher. I'm expecting downward movement just a tiny little bit more, possibly to find support at that lower triangle trend line and then an upward swing to develop. Price remains consolidating, although it's looking more bearish for the classic technical analysis picture at this time. This is now the bearish wave count, the main wave count. It sees a huge expanded flat unfolding at the quarterly chart level. Here's the end of wave B, which moves beyond the end at start of wave A, as it does within an expanded flat. And wave C is expected to move beyond the end of wave A, which is at 1046.75 in December 2015, that very important low for gold. Supercycle C is expected to move below that point to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat. The target for Supercycle C is for it to reach 1.618 the length of Supercycle A, a common Fibonacci ratio between waves A and C within expanded flats, which are common structures. The target is at 657. Supercycle C may only subdivide as a five wave motive structure, within it cycle wave 1 may be a complete leading expanding diagonal and cycle wave 2 may be an incomplete zigzag, subdividing 5, 3, 5 labelled primary A, B, C. The bearish wave count is now going to consider a triangle unfolding sideways for primary wave B within the zigzag of cycle 2. When the triangle is complete for this wave count, it expects an upward breakout to be a relatively short, in terms of the monthly chart level anyway, to be a relatively short wave for primary C, which would then be expected to move slightly, at least slightly, if not somewhat, above the end of primary A to avoid a truncation. Cycle 2 may not move beyond the start of cycle 1 above 2070.78. Let's take a look at the structure of the triangle for primary B. It'll begin off to the left of the chart and this slow down here, the end of intermediate A, is this point down here. So intermediate A subdivides as a zigzag. Intermediate B, a double zigzag, W, X, Y. Intermediate C, an incomplete single zigzag. And then intermediate D may unfold higher as a single zigzag, and intermediate E may then unfold lower as a single zigzag. Elliott wave triangles are a little different to classic triangle patterns in that they have more strict rules that they must adhere to. This triangle for primary B may be either a regular contracting or regular barrier triangle. For both a regular contracting and regular barrier triangle, the rule is the same for wave C, it may not move beyond the end of A below 1693.69. It may end at how I've drawn the AC trend line from the end of intermediate A to sit on this low of minor X. It might end at this trend line because Elliott wave triangles are commonly tested within the triangle subwaves, but it doesn't have to end there, it could end below that point. If price moves below this trend line, that's okay, it doesn't invalidate the triangle, this is the lower invalidation point for this triangle. If price moves below this trend line, then we have to move the trend line lower, and that would be okay, but in the first instance, look out for support at this trend line. When intermediate C may be a complete zigzag, then an upward swing for intermediate D may not, for a contracting triangle, move beyond the end of B above 1875.09, but for a barrier triangle, the BD trend line should sit essentially flat, so D should end about the same level as B. This is the only Elliott wave rule which is not absolute, it involves a small area of subjectivity. D can end very slightly beyond the end of B, as long as that BD trend line looks essentially flat to the eye, a triangle would remain valid. When D is complete, then E may not move beyond the end of C. This wave count expects a triangle to complete for several weeks yet and be followed by a relatively short-lived upward breakout from the triangle and then a huge trend change and a big downward wave. Cycle 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 above 2070.78.
This is the bullish wave count and I'm going to use this now as the main wave count. It has a better look and a better fit for the bullish wave count. The bullish wave count considers a huge impulse unfolding lower for super cycle 1. Within it, cycle waves 1, 2 and 3 are complete. Here's the end of 3 and the start of 4. The bullish wave count will now consider a zigzag continuing lower for cycle 4 to subdivide 5, 3, 5 and be labelled primary A, B, C. I know B is actually a 5 wave structure, a triangle, but it's classified a 3 in terms of Elliott wave and that it's a corrective structure. The triangle for primary wave B may, be, may so far have intermediate A, B and C complete, D may move a little lower and then E may unfold. The structure of primary B may not move beyond the start of A above 2070.48. When the triangle is complete for the bullish wave count then perversely a downward breakout is expected for primary C to move below the end of A at 1677.64 to avoid a truncation and to complete the zigzag structure of cycle wave 4. When cycle 4 is complete then an upward a massive trend change to a new bull market and upward wave for cycle 5 would then be expected. Let's take a look at how this triangle is labelled this slow down here. The end of intermediate B, intermediate C a double zigzag, intermediate D an incomplete single zigzag again. Looking at the lower trend line here from the end of intermediate B to sit along X here, it could end at that trend line, it doesn't have to, but look out for support in the first instance at this trend line. If primary wave B is a regular contracting triangle, then within it, intermediate D may not move below the end of B, below 1693.69. But primary B could also be a barrier triangle where D should end about the same level as B so that the BD trend line looks essentially flat to the eye again. There is some level of subjectivity and D may move slightly below the end of B. As long as the lower trend line looks flat, a triangle for this wave count would remain valid. When D is complete, then E may not move beyond the end of C above 1875.09. That rule for wave E is absolute for both a contracting and barrier triangle. When the triangle for B is complete, a big downward breakout from the triangle to end below 1677.64 for this wave count would then be expected. I do still have this idea, it's an alternate this week for the bullish wave count, it just doesn't have as good a fit or look and so I've decided finally to swap them over. Sadly with all of this chopping and overlapping price is still within a consolidation zone, there are multiple Elliott wave counts possible at this stage. This wave count see cycle 4 complete here as a triple zigzag, cycle 5 beginning with primary 1 and 2 complete, within primary 3 intermediate 1 and 2 complete, within intermediate 3 minor 1 complete, minor 2 may move just a little lower but it may not move beyond the start of 1 below 1722.02, that invalidation point is absolute, that rule is absolute. Let's take a look at classic analysis now this week because ADX at both time frames is finally telling us there is a trend but price does remain within a consolidation zone. It's been within this consolidation zone for over a year now. This has been a really, really difficult market to analyse for over a year. Resistance about 1915, strong support about 1675. We really do need to see price break out of this huge consolidation before we can have any confidence whatsoever of whether or not gold remains in a bull market or is in a new bear market. In other words, which Elliott wave count is correct? This chart is not telling us with clarity at all. For the short term, downward weeks come with declining volume, prices falling of its own weight. On balance volume at the weekly chart level did give us a bearish signal and now ADX at the weekly chart level is above 15 and this week it rises from lot below both DX lines. This is a bearish signal from ADX, the strongest signal ADX can give. It at this point doesn't really support either rally at wave count but it expects that a downward breakout is more imminent than upward. Stochastics in neutral territory, RSI also neutral, plenty of room for a downward trend to continue if there is one in an early stage. 
at the daily chart level also ADX is telling us there's a new downward trend but it's not coming up from below both DX lines so the signal is not as strong as at the weekly chart level. We had an upward swing here to resistance, a downward swing continuing but price falling of its own weight. On balance volume at support, look for support at identified support lines along the way down if this downward swing is going to continue. RSI neutral, plenty of room if there is a new downward trend for it to continue. Stochastics oversold, but we use RSI when ADX tells us there's a trend. ATR increasing as price moves lower supports the view we may have a new downward trend unfolding. Dev picture expects that that potential downward trend is probably going to be short lived. It doesn't have as much support at the daily chart level, so the technical analysis doesn't offer good support to the Elliott wave counts, but the picture is still unclear, albeit leaning bearish this week. That's all from me this week with your gold analysis. I hope all our members are looking forward to a fabulous weekend.